All right, this is your virtual walkthrough of your unit. For your hitch, you're gonna need a two inch ball for your hitch. You're also gonna need a latch to uh, box to make your latch stay down. That way it doesn't, the trailer doesn't pop up off of the ball as you're traveling. You've got an electric tongue jack. You've got your on off switch for your light for docking. And then your extend and retract, which is basically lifts the front of the camper up or down. Uh, it's the only way that you're going to level the camper front to back as far as side to side. You're going to have to chalk up the wheels on whichever side is low. Uh, seven way power cord here. This not only does your perimeter lights, turn signals, stop lights, but also provides 12 volt power to the camper. You simply plug it into your vehicle, start the vehicle. Um, it will provide 12 volt power. Also, this does trickle charge your battery whenever you're traveling down the road. Um, also does the electric brakes um, if you have a brake controller on your vehicle you'll be able to utilize the brakes on the camper um, that way your vehicle's not using uh, your vehicle brakes aren't doing for the vehicle plus the camper all right lp tank which is full uh gas system has had a uh, pr drop pressure test performed on it make sure there's no gas leaks in the system it is full so uh you can begin to use it you have your safety chains here with your breakaway cable. As you can see, I've got to pull through one loop and then I go through the hook. We don't need the safety cable to be snaked through all, all the lengths of the chain or we'll not be able to pull this pin out. If this pin pulls out, it basically locks the brakes up on the camper. So uh, if anything happens, the camper comes disconnected from the hitch, then this is gonna pull the pin out and it's gonna lock the brakes up on it. That way it doesn't go barreling down the highway. All right. Uh, 12 volt deep cycle marine battery um, as long as you're plugged in on your shore power or you're plugged into your vehicle your battery will be charged um, as far as how long it takes for the battery to discharge uh, during use that all depends on uh, what how much 12 volt items you have powered on all right over here to the side we have a front storage compartment keys are located inside uh, we have our fresh water connection basically open the cap stick a hose in turn it on about halfway we don't need it to go full blast into there because you can expand the tank and, and cause it to rupture or have cracks in it uh, but that's where you'll put your fresh water in and you use your 12 volt water pump there's a switch on the inside lay a water water little water pump uh, that will be how you get the water out of your fresh water tank and into the camper itself uh, city water connection basically you're going to take a water hose from point a to point b Turn the water on that gives you power or gives you water into the camper yes you can utilize both of them at the same time you can fill your fresh water tank up and you can have your city water connection turned on that way you don't have to worry about losing water pressure all right down here we've got the water heater this is a dual fired water heater you have uh, electric element located down at the bottom and this is your lp section you have two resets. You have one on this side and one on this side. One's gonna be for electric, one's gonna be for the LP side. So if you're not heating, your breaker's on, you know you're plugged in, come over here and check your test buttons to make sure that they are, uh, they're not depressed. Uh, as far as draining the water heater, we got an inch and an eighth socket that we're going to, or inch and a sixteenth socket that we're gonna take on here with an extension and a ratchet. We're gonna remove this. This is your anode rod. So it's gonna be about eight and a half, nine inches long. Um, you don't wanna be sitting in front of it. When you do pull it out, you wanna be standing off to the side. Once you get the rod pulled out, we're gonna pull the relief valve and we're gonna drain the water heater, provided that you don't have uh, the city water turned on and make sure your water pump is turned off. Um, other than that, whenever you're done with it, you can set the rod inside and then you'll be ready to go for your next camping trip. Uh, yes, you do have to re-Teflon tape them and um, also do not try to bury the threads. If you try to bury the threads, you will strip it out the fitting and then you're going to be leaking water. All right. Uh, spare tire is located up under the front of the camper. This little section right here is where your spare tire rod is. You have a hand crank that you're going to use to lower the spare tire. And then you can put your busted tire on, back on there and you can crank it back up. And that way you don't have to have it sloshing around in the camper. All right, black tank flush. We need to get that poop tank cleaned out. You already dump it. We still got all that stuff sitting on the, on the walls of the tank. So we need to get that tank cleaned out. So we're gonna hook the water hose up. After we've already drained our sewer outlet, we're gonna have our hose connected from here to the dump site. 
First, we're gonna close the gate valve after we've drained it, turn the water on to the black tank flush, fill the black tank up by the tank in level indicators inside. Once you get to full, you're gonna come out, pull this, let all that drain out, and close it back up. You flush it about two or three times, and that'll make sure that your tank gets nice and clean, and um, you don't have to smell nastiness in the camper. All right, outdoor shower here. Basically has a hot and cold water with that shower head on it with a pause on it. So uh, if you're wanting to rinse your dog off or rinse your feet off, what have you, um, you can adjust the temperature and make it a little bit warm or what have you. All right, 25 foot, 30 amp power cord. This does come with the unit. Uh, make sure that your parks that you go to, make sure they are allowed for 30 amp services or get an adapter to adapt from a 30 to a 50. And then that way you won't have any issues as far as uh, hooking up electrically. All right, solar charge. If you wanna add a solar panel, you got your camper backed up in the shade, you can set your solar panel outside in the sun. That will also keep your battery trickle charged as well. Cable connection, pretty simple. Cable, uh, screw one end to the other end. Boom, that puts cable in the camper. All right, wheels and tires. 50 PSI is what the maximum pressure is on your tires. They're set to 45 PSI, basically give you five pounds for heat expansion as you're traveling down the road. Also, lug nuts. If you have to replace the tire, you had the tire blow, you had a new one put on, they're gonna want you to retorque these lug nuts at 50 miles, then at 100 miles, and then at 200 miles. The torque rating on them is 100 foot pounds. We set them to 102 because we use a deep well socket extension and then our torque wrench, so. Um, technically, it should be 102 pounds you set on your torque wrench. Uh, of course, your sewer outlets, this is for your gray tank, this is for your black tank, so you will have to have two hoses that go into a Y um, if your campsite has a dump station on the site. Of course, whenever you are, uh, with your boondocking, we wanna make sure we have these closed, that way we don't have any water coming out. And before you open up your caps, you wanna make sure that these are closed as well, especially with the black tank. Uh, black tank, I normally take it and then I'll open up the bottom, let whatever residual water fall out before I completely remove the, the cap. That way, uh, if the gate valve happened to fail, we don't have nastiness getting poured all over our feet. And then, of course, when we're done, we'll close it up. All right, stabilizing jacks. You have one on all four corners, uh, three quarter inch socket, but these do come with a manual crank. But you can get you a three quarter inch socket and an impact drill, and you can zoom them guys up and down. Um, you do want these down whenever you're going to walk into this camper. This camper will, it only has a single axle on it, so you will teeter-totter with it and it will roll on you. So make sure your wheels are chopped. Also make sure all four of your stabilizers are down to keep the campers from uh, popping up and down. All right, around the back back here, we not only have your entry door, but we have an outside light. We also have uh, rear camera compatible. This thing is uh, wired up for rear camera, so it's basically a plug and play. Um, if you happen to purchase it, just remove the blank plate, screw your camera in, plug it in, screw it in, and then you'll be ready to have a camera that is used whenever you turn your headlights on. All right. Around the side over here, this is basically a refrigerator vent and an access, service access for us technicians. Uh, there's no storage compartment or anything like that. Nothing that you, the customer needs to be uh, need to be going in there for. Down at the bottom here, we have a 110 outlet. We also have a furnace intake and exhaust. Now this will exhaust hot air whenever you are running the furnace. So be careful what you park next to. If you got a table set here with something on it, that furnace comes on, it will melt whatever is in front of it. All right, front storage. See, you have storage goes all the way across. You also have your crank handles. One of them is going to be for your tongue jack in case something uh, electronically happens with the switch. You will be able to manually run the camper up and down and get it on and off of the vehicle. Uh, the other one here is for your stabilizing jacks. Um, if you do not have the uh, impact drill with the socket, you're going to spend a few minutes uh, getting those things up and down. All right, your awning. You also have your outside speakers. Those are marine grade, so there's no issues with getting wet. I just wouldn't recommend um, sending the pressure washer directly on them. Uh, awning, make sure we run the awning in when we leave the camper. If we're gonna go shopping or get something to eat, uh, the wind likes to tear these up pretty easily. So whenever you're done with it, make sure you roll it in. 